Welcome to this Learn All Analysis tutorial on Reading All Analysis Reports. My name is Adam, the founder of LearnAllAnalysis.com. Today we have a worked example of a lifeboat engine oil. Here's the sample report with the most recent sample on the left and the historical samples to the right. We are going to work through this example together, but first, let's clear some of this clutter on the whiteboard. When looking at this report, the first question I ask myself is do I believe the information I've been given? Or is the sample consistent with the oil expected? This is a great way to identify obvious mislabeling of samples by the client. The way I do this is first look at the viscosity as it is the most important property of the oil, followed by additive levels which include acid number and base number values too. I next look at the contamination and if there is any wear that could be linked to the contamination. If there is no wear, then this could be a fault caught very early on or a poorly taken sample. I then look at specific wear metals that appear abnormal and see if the pattern of elements can identify what is wearing. All the above is put together into the most important part of the diagnosis, which is the advice and recommendations. This can be an oil or filter change or simply further monitoring. Throughout, I consider the criticality of the equipment in both impact of failure and impact of taking the machine offline to perform maintenance or inspections. You should never rely on one result or sample to make a maintenance decision, and I prefer to help the client link this information to other inspection data to be sure before making an intervention. I also consider the urgency of the recommendation for instance, does it require a call to let the client know the problem is critical, or can it wait until the next service? In the case of the lifeboat, it's critical this works when needed, so it can be treated as needing addressing as soon as possible. I also look at what actions can be done to prevent future problems for the client for when failure is not an option. These may include changes such as upgrades to test suites to add extra tests, more frequent sampling, Sampling other fluids such as coolant or fuel on engines as supporting evidence. Changes to client's condemning limits. Changes to all drain intervals. So let's now look at this report. Starting with, do I believe this is an engine oil? The viscosity is low, but still consistent with an engine oil. The additives such as calcium, phosphorus, zinc and molybdenum have all dropped. So have both the acid number and base numbers suggesting something is diluting the additives and thinning the oil. This appears to be fuel, which there is also soot from incomplete combustion of this fuel. There is also silicon from sand or dirt contamination and wear elements of chrome and iron from piston rings and cylinder liners. The aluminium could be either from dirt, when linked with silicon, piston wear, or both. Putting this all together, we can make some conclusions. There is fuel dilution, causing both lowering of the viscosity and dilution of additives. There is also evidence of upper cylinder wear and abrasive material of dirt or sand. The exact source doesn't matter too much this time, but let's call it environmental dirt for now. Let's look at the process that happens and try to understand this better. So we have an engine below and we now introduce our abrasive particles of environmental dirt and this gouges out metal when trapped between two moving surfaces. This is called cutting wear. So the next question is, why are fuel and soot both present? Let's take a closer look. So we add dirt to the upper cylinder space. If you take a piece and rub it back and forth between the piston and liner, the seal separating the upper and lower cylinders is lost by cutting wear meaning dirt gets past the upper cylinder into the lower cylinder where it can be measured in the oil. The metal material lost of aluminium, iron and chrome also appears in the oil too. This means fuel and soot also make it past the rings. The fuel adding a finishing blow to the seal by washing away the lubricant that is preventing wear and also helping seal the two spaces. This process of lost sealing is often called blow by. So now we know how the process is occurring and it is linked to the hard particles of environmental dirt. 
Next, you may wonder where this abrasive material is coming from. Well, it's most likely the air induction system. And to fix it, this may be a filter change or inspection of the trunking for holes or other damage. So let's put all we have learned into a diagnosis for the client. I always start with viscosity, which is low, owing to fuel dilution. I then move on to contamination, such as silicon and aluminium, suggesting dirt ingress. It may also be sand if the aluminium is only wear, but in either case it doesn't matter too much, as the advice is the same. Then I comment about the wear metals and identify them as upper cylinder wear. I have also chosen to summarise the two problems into one fault of blow by. I then suggest changing the oil to remove this contamination. Checking the air induction system for damage. I recommend resampling after 100 hours to monitor if this has resolved the issue or if the damage caused requires further action. Engines of this type tend to have low level fuel dilution anyway because they are only run occasionally. But if it continued to be high then checking the crankcase pressure may be a confirmation test to confirm the severity of the damage. If you are watching this as part of an online training course, you may now work through some of the examples on your own below. Thank you for listening.